Hello viewers, we'll be going over gold and silver futures. In this video, we'll be going over the day-by-day -day probability model, the technical performance of each model, how we find the models, and the day-by-day -day forecast for gold and silver futures. So back to the technical analysis, we'll be going over gold futures first. We're up 1.6% on the one-hour chart. We are nearing overbought RSI. We're now approaching to positive one-hour MACD. As for the four-hour chart, we start to see a convergence and we're still in negative four hour MACD. However, it's a positive sign that we see a nice spike in volume to the upside. And as for the daily chart, if we expand that further, we're still approaching to negative MACD. We're, we have not seen a convergence on the daily MACD, so there is concern that there is still downward pressure. And as for the upward momentum, we saw a break in the upward pattern made last week so we're no longer on the upward trajectory we're now below the bottom boundaries so we may see a downward pressure on gold futures and at the moment we do see a nine nine day moving average diverging onto the 18 day moving average this purple line so we may see a possible lower highs and lower lows at the moment we are resting at immediate support around 1600 or $1,680. The next support that I see will be the 50-day moving average if we do break that support. And that 50-day moving average it rests on previous resistance. And since we're above resistance, that now act as our support. And that 50-day moving average is this yellow line. And that is around a price of $1,666. And as for resistance, if we do manage to climb higher, the next resistance that I see will be around a price of $1,750. Previous resistance that dated back to April 23rd and back in April 14th. So if we do manage to climb higher, that price movement is roughly around 2.2% to the upside. And to the downside, it is roughly around 3%. So let's head to the day-by-day -day probability model. Again, these models are now available in the link below, so do check it out. So as the days progress to the seventh day, we have a 41% chance for gold futures to climb between 0 to 5%. On the extreme case, we have a 1 or 12% chance for gold to climb between 5 to 10%. On the other hand, we have a 41% chance for gold to fall between 0 and negative 5%. And on further extreme case, we have a 6% chance for gold to fall between negative 5 to negative 10%. So let's head to the day-by-day -day forecast for gold futures. So we have one day out, so that will be a Friday, and two days out will be a Monday. So three days out, four days out, five days out, six days out, and seven days out. So which one of these models we should focus on? Ideally, the model that is best matched to the current trend. Right here we have a current trend and overlapping is the trend that I believe is the best match. So on here we have our current trend and below is the trend that I believe is the best match and this trend dates back to February 22nd, 2010 to May 18th, 2010. So let's point out why these two charts are similar. So we start off at the upper Bollinger Band where we're back to the middle Bollinger Band and then bounce right off that to upper Bollinger Band once more. And then we made a reversal to touch the bottom Bollinger Band, another increasing reversal to higher highs, upper Bollinger Band, and then we were back to the middle Bollinger Band. So now the trend in question, we have a similar pattern here as well. We start off at the upper Bollinger Band, bounce right off the middle Bollinger Band, touch the upper Bollinger Band again, and then we slowly drift lower to the bottom Bollinger Band, and then we saw a nice reversal to hit the upper Bollinger Band, and we saw a reversion to the mean to the middle Bollinger Band. So what we have here are one, two, three, four, five, six points. We also have one, two, three, four, five, six points. So there's reason to believe that the trends and patterns are the same. The outcome and forecast should be fairly the same. So the model that we just examined was February, February 2nd, February 22nd, to May 18, 2010, back then, gold futures was down roughly around 7 point, 73 basis points, so slightly to the downside, not much 
not much volatility in the next coming days. And that coincides with this standard deviation of 41% chance between 0 to negative 5%. So let's examine the technical performance of each model. So the tr trend that we just were are in, we are currently down 2% from monthly high, up 14% from monthly low, down 50 basis points from 10 simple moving average, down 60 basis points from 20 simple moving average, and up 3% from 50 simple moving average. And now the trend that we just examined was February, say February 22nd to May 18, 2010. It was down roughly around 1.6% from monthly high, up 11% from monthly low, down 31 basis points from up 31 basis points from 10 simple moving average, up 2.5% from 20 simple moving average, and up 6% from 50 simple moving average. So among the two trends, we see a slight technical difference among the 10 simple moving average and 20 simple moving average. It was now negative on 10 and 20 simple moving average on the current trend compared to that to the trend that we just examined, which are positive. So let's examine silver futures. So right now currently silver futures is up around 3.2%. And on the four or one hour chart, we are now over overbought on the RSI. We're now positive on the one hour RSI. As for the four hour chart, we are now approaching to positive MACD and we see a nice positive or nice spike in volume to the upside. As for the daily chart, we still are nearing or in negative MACD on the daily chart. We are seeing an attempt to breach above the resistance on the 50 day moving average or the yield line as indicated and if we do manage to close above where we are are now we do see a possible resistance at around the price of $16 and that indicated also previous resistance back in April 14 and if we do manage to head down lower there is support back around $14.35 since. So if we do manage to climb higher, that price movement is roughly around 3.4% to the upside and to the downside, it is around 6.7% to next previous support. So let's examine the day-by-day -day probability model for silver. We'll be using ETF ticker symbol SLV. So as the days progress to the seventh day, we have a 16 or 17% 7, chance for silver to climb between 0 to 9%. On the extreme case, we have 17% chance for silver to climb between 9 to 18%. And on downside, we have a 50% chance for silver to fall between 0 and 9%. And extreme case, we have a 17% chance for silver to fall between 9 to negative, negative 9 to negative 18%. So let's examine the day-by-day -day forecast for silver futures. So we have one day out, two days out, three days out, four days out, five days out, six days out, and seven days out. So which one of these models we should focus on? Ideally, the model that is best matched to the current trend. And overlapping is trend that I believe is the best match. And that trend dates back to August 15 to November 8, 2011. So we have the current trend right here and below is the trend that I believe is the best match. So let's compare the two trends. We start off at the upper Bollinger Band, proceed to drift lower, touch the bottom Bollinger Band, touch the upper Bollinger Band once more, and then drift back to the middle Bollinger Band. So we have those points there. So we start off the upper Bollinger Band, proceed down to the bottom Bollinger Band, touch the upper Bollinger Band once more, and then revert back to the main to the middle Bollinger Band. So what we have here are one, two, three, four points. We also have one, two, three, four points. So there is reason to believe that the trends and patterns are the same. The outcome and forecast should be fairly the same. So the model that we just examined was August 15 to November 8th, 2011. Back then, silver was down roughly around 10.8%. So if we examine the day-by-day -day probability model that coincides with the, on the extreme case, six. 16 to 17 percent chance between negative 9 to negative 18 percent down in the next coming days. So let's examine the technical performance of each model. So 
the model that we're currently in, we are, say, we're down 20, 24% from monthly high, up 20% from monthly low, down up 22 per basis points from 10 super moving average, down 70 basis points from 20 simple moving average, and up two basis points from 50 simple moving average. Now the, let's compare the, to the trend that we just examined, which was August 15 to November 8, 2011. It was down roughly around 25% from monthly high, up 15% from monthly low, up 2% from 10 simple moving average, up 5.6% from 20 simple moving average, and down 55 basis points from 50 simple moving average. So among the two trends, we see that on the current trend, there are some technical differences. On the current trend, we're down from the 10, 20 simple moving average. And as for the trend in question that we examined, it was much higher, higher compared to that to the 10 simple moving average as well. So there are technical differences among two trends, and also we have wear down on the trend in question. It was down 55 basis points compared to that to up two basis points on 50 moving average. So do keep that in mind. Again, these models are now available in the link below, so do check it out. If you enjoyed this content, feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and thank you for watching.